It's now my honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Vincent DiMazzo. With 20 years experience in the food industry, Vincent is now Senior Advisor at the United Nations Global Compact on Oceans, as well as the Director for the Food Program for the Lloyd's Register Foundation. Vincent leads the charitable objectives of the Foundation through the funding of innovative projects to drive safely in the food supply chain, partnering with the UN, FAO, the World Bank, WWF, universities, NGOs, and large brands, Vincent led and released the Seaweed Manifesto in a call to scale up the seaweed industry in order to address some of the world's most important challenges, hunger, global warming, pollution, and poverty. Vincent is now leading the Safe Seaweed Coalition, the first ever global platform for seaweed stakeholders, and is also part of the UN Food System Summit Organization for Seaweed as well as the member of the EU expert panel to define and drive the LG strategy at the European Commission. Please welcome Vincent Dumezzo. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, and, and thanks a lot for, for, for this invitation. I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, so you should be able to see that. Um, are you or yeah, is it, is it okay for you? Karen? Trust it's fine. Yes, so, I'm sorry. Yes, it looks great. Yeah. Thank you. All good. Um, so just to let, let you know, well, uh, I'm 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 in France right now, so uh, quite a bit far away, and that's my main regret actually, not to be with you here uh, today. So I, I I would really like to be uh, to be with you in in BC, um, and it it is a great pleasure for me to be to be here. I'm not as stated. I'm not a seaweed specialist initially as such. Um, I moved to the seaweed topic because I was working in the food industry and trying to find ways to feed the world of tomorrow. And actually, we were running a, a, a short of solution. So, and then I realized that seaweed uh, was a very, very good news for all of us and, and, and was maybe the greatest untapped resource we have. Um, and so if you are craving for good news, and I think we are all craving for good news at the moment, I think seaweed is a very, very good news for all of us because it, it, uh, it has so much. So if you think of uh, seaweed as being uh, slimy, smelly, and, and sexy, I think it's really time to get over it. And, and, and seaweed is much, much more than beef. So I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of United Nations here as well. So I'm gonna explain uh, why, why it's so popular for United Nations, this seaweed story. So just before I get a bit more introduction about who I am and, and what is uh, what who is supporting uh, this uh, this initiative and why we are doing this, a quick summary on why seaweed is so popular at the moment and why seaweed is a good news. First and foremost, because seaweed is a very very good source of food. Um, it is very very healthy. I mean, we we have we have lost track of uh, eating seaweed. Actually, I think, in fact. If you think about it, I mean, from a, a civilization perspective, we moved out of um, prehistory back 10, 12,000 years ago when we stopped being hunters, gatherers, and we became farmers. But we never really became uh, a farmers in the ocean. So we are still, still hunters, gatherers. We are fishing and collecting wild seaweed mostly. Um, so we are we have still to get into the civilization of the ocean. So uh, I think the idea is really to move to that civilization of the ocean and start to cultivate seaweed instead of uh, uh, collecting wild seaweed, which will uh, put uh, the, the resource at risk because of course we are, uh, we are decreasing the, 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 the remaining seaweed left uh, uh, wild. So I think that the, the first thing is really, it's a, it's a huge source of sustainable food uh, massive, massive potential. Uh, there was a study saying that 2% of the ocean dedicated to seaweed production would be sufficient to feed 12 billion people, uh, notably in protein. Seaweed is a, a, a nutritional bomb. It's full of protein. It's full of, um, of vitamin C, B12, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid, uh, which are so uh, critical to our health. And, and, and a lot of other good stuff that we cannot find anywhere else. Um, in Japan, where they are very, very used to eat uh, a lot of seaweed, they, they, they can uh, they eat up to 10% of their uh, meal as uh, uh, seaweed. 
But um, so we are still to understand that. We are still to understand what, what to do with this um, and how to do that and get used to each series. And I think that's a, that's a very, very core uh, topic because we've realized all around the world uh, that you can develop the seaweed market only if it's based on food. It, it has a lot of other applications as we will see here, but food is really the keystone for the seaweed industry. So that's very important. And if you think about it in terms of figures, the ocean covers 70% of our planet and only contribute to 3% of our food today. When you think that already 1 billion people almost are starving to death today in the world, that we have an additional 300,000 people to, to feed every day on the planet compared to the previous day. Um, um, and, 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 and that the impact on the environment of our purely uh, land-based food systems is so massive in terms of greenhouse gas, in, ten, in terms of uh, soil depletion, in terms of water scarcity. We need to move to the ocean. We need to develop food from the ocean. And, 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 and seaweed is not only, uh, so you may say that you are not into eating seaweed, but seaweed is not only a, a source of direct food, as mentioned, it should be seen also as a source of indirect food. Um, it is a sustainable uh, livestock feed, uh, very, very sustainable, with a lot of, of very positive um, side effects. One of them being that it will boost the immune system of the livestock or of the fishes, if you are into aquaculture, so you can cut uh, the use of antibiotics. And, and decrease uh, antibiotics uh, use, uh, which is decreasing the risk of antibiotic resistance, which is a major risk for all of us. Another very positive side effect when, when used as a source of feed is that it will uh, cut methane emission, as it was said before. Uh, it can cut methane emission up to 99%. There's a small seaweed called Asparagopsis, which is not uh, growing uh, much in Canada, unfortunately, but um, if you put just 2% of this small seaweed in the in the in the in the meal of your of your animal, then you can cut uh, methane emission uh, by 99%. And when you think that methane emission is 8% of our greenhouse gas globally, then you you realize that it's a big big uh, contribution. It can be a biostimulant for plants, uh, boosting the resistance and and uh, of the plant and growing making them grow much faster. It is a very good source of carbon sequestration. If you think about it, uh, this big seaweed that you have, the, big, the, the giant kelp, the macrocystis, they can grow up to 30 centimeters a day, a day. So if you think about planting a tree, you plant, a tree will grow of 30 centimeters a year for the first year, maybe. Uh, a, a, a seaweed can grow up to 30 centimeters a day. And then this giant kelp, they can grow up to 60 meters high. So it's a massive uh, source of carbon sequestration. And, and the good thing is that uh, during their growth phase, 50% of the biomass of the seaweed, they are losing cells, just like we are losing skin cells uh, all, all day long. Uh, they are losing some kind of skin cells as well, 50% of the total biomass, and it all goes into the ocean. It is, I mean, not all, but a large part of it goes into the ocean and is sunk, sunk into the ocean, down into the seabed, and it's sequestered there it's, it's for, for millenniums. It, it, it does go back where it used to be in, in the deep sea of the ocean. And, and uh, Megan from Ocean 2050 will, will introduce that in much more detail in a couple of days, I think. But that's a very, very uh, a massive source of, uh, of, uh, of uh, mitigation of the global warming, because not only you cut emission, but also you take the carbon from the atmosphere and you send it back under, uh, under the earth, where it used to be. So that's very massive as a solution growing seaweed because that's the only way to take the carbon out of the carbon cycle. It will also uh, absorb pollutants and, 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 uh, and provide life under the ocean. That's the basis of life in the ocean is, is related to seaweed. I mean, just like on earth, when we start to develop uh, uh, agriculture, uh, and farming back 12,000 years ago, we did not start uh, feeding animals, or, or, or we did not start. We did not start st start it with with livestock. Actually, we start with crop production, and at some point, we decided to use that crop production to feed livestock. But in the ocean, we have we have started the other way around. We decided to start aquaculture by feeding animals without taking care about what we feed them. 
So we, we ended up feeding animals with uh, meat proteins from the land or, or soy products or soy meal, uh, which is a nonsense. So we need to create a new ecosystem, a new um, integrated multi-trophic aquaculture. And you have some very, very good specialists of this in Canada, actually. Um, so we have to develop that type of uh, permaculture in the ocean in order to grow seaweed and in order to respect our environment and, and restore abundance in our ocean. And that's so important, those co-location, grow, I mean, growing seaweed along with uh, shellfish, along with fin fish, along with sea stars and so forth, will create a positive uh, ecosystem, uh, a regenerative ecosystem where we are only having a, uh, an extractive ecosystem at the moment. So the other good thing of seaweed is to replace bio-packaging. I don't know if you can see that here, uh, but that's a, a, it's not a plastic glass. It's made out of seaweed. And I could actually actually eat that glass after drinking the water inside. Uh, you, so you can use kelp for other type of things. I mean, this is a box made out of uh, kelp. You know? So it's, it's, it's very, very robust, very, very solid. I have some big piece of this here. So you can do building materials, you can do a lot of things. So it can replace a lot of, um, well, of course, it can solve the plastic problems uh, and replace a lot of materials that, that we have. So it is very interesting. We are already eating seaweed five times a day because you have seaweed extract in each and every part of our food. I mean, uh, as a texturing agent or, 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 or gelling agent. Uh, there's a lot of vitamins and, and pharmaceuticals as well. So there, there's a, a lot, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna go into all the detail, but there's a lot of positive aspects of seaweed. And there's also an enormous growth potential for the sector. It is a new source of revenues for coastal community. Africa, we are uh, bringing the seaweed revolution to Africa at the moment because Africa has such a huge, huge potential. There's a new farm uh, which is built uh, at the, in, just right in front of Namibia. Uh, so the farm will produce tons and tons of, 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 of resources and will absorb as much greenhouse gas and the entire emission of Netherlands, actually. So um, that's massive. And the good thing of this is that most of the job uh, in these countries, in Africa and in Southeast Asia, uh, is done by women. And they are holding leadership position and they are also delivering the job because it's, uh, uh, they are fishermen's wife, actually. So as such, it contribute to gender uh, parity and contribute to women empowerment. So once again, seaweed has so much different uses, so much different potential, and it's very hard to um, to uh, to tell them all because we are first of all we are still to discover most of them. The potential for medicines is absolutely fantastic as well. For instance, we will hear very soon about great news uh, uh, related to Alzheimer's disease. Uh, that can be uh, could be uh, created by 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 um, cured by uh, by by seaweed extract as well. So there's a lot to a lot to discover, and and when you think about it once again, I mean, all the plants we have. I mean, the seaweed are there are there are there are three main type of seaweed. You are talking a lot about kelp here, but there are three main types of seaweed: the red, the green, and 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 the brown seaweed. The, the, the red seaweed are 2 billion years old, uh, uh, and then the green seaweed are about the same. And, and then only half a billion years ago, the green, moved, the green seaweed moved on land. And then they became uh, uh, all food, uh, all, all plants are, 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 are originally from, from these green seaweed. So these green seaweed, over the evolution, over the years, they have evolved in all the different type of plants we have on the planet. So all in all, just to summarize it, today, if you take a green seaweed, it is genetically much closer to an oak tree or, or, or to a strawberry than it is to a red seaweed. So that just to illustrate the wide, wide potential uh, about, about this seaweed. Uh, and once again, uh, 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 we, we, we don't know any of them. We are commercializing about 20 to 30 seaweeds at the moment out of 12,000. We are cultivating seven. So everything is to be understood and is still to be uh, uh, is still to be uh, to be known about seaweed. We have an unlimited potential of innovation there, which is very very good news. Um, getting very quick because I'm thinking a bit late. So what 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 are, are, are we doing for that? So I'm just uh, so just to remember you uh, UN Global Compact 
is the largest corporate sustainable uh, initiative brought together by UN agencies. Um, so I was sent by my company at the UN uh, meeting uh, last year in, in New York, at the UN uh, head office. It was a big meeting and then I took the floor uh, and, and I decided to, to voice that potential about CV because I, was, I used to work with the likes of Nestle, Danone and, and Cargill and Mars and Coca-Cola at CEO level and none of them uh, heard about uh, seaweed and their uh, fantastic potential. So I decided to voice that at the UN and then it went quite viral and people came to me and said, well, we need to do something. And UNGC was the first one and they told me, we want, uh, we want you to work for us because we think seaweed uh, has a momentum right now, which is why I'm now uh, part of UN Global Compact. So we are really trying to address uh, the SDGs and, and it's the largest corporate sustainability initiative once again with UN Global Compact, with the Lloyd's Register Foundation, which is my other business, and with a lot of other stakeholders, we have launched the, uh, uh, the Seaweed Manifesto, uh, which is because we think that like, we need to tell the story right, and it, it needs to be a science-based science story. Because, I mean, everything I told you about seaweed, we need to make sure it is science-based evidence to demonstrate that. So this manifesto that you have here, which is Seaweed Revolution, the Manifesto for a Sustainable Future, which was released last June and, and presented at the UN General Assembly last September. I mean, we have developed it with uh, Chinese and, and Japanese university because they are the ones who know the best about seaweed, most about seaweed. We have developed this with the Food and Agriculture Organization, the FAO, of course, uh, the Natural Conservancy, the World Resource Institute, WWF, Cargill, Ocean 2050, and so much more. And in this manifesto, we decided to tell the story about seaweed. What is the potential? What are the barriers? And what are the call to action in order to really uh, overcome that barriers? And what should we do for that? Um, and, and, and that went very, very big. We went all around uh, in the media. There was a lot of uh, uh, communication around this, uh, this seaweed manifesto. It was, we were the first one to be really amazed uh, by this, it was it was downloaded thousands and thousands of times. Uh, you can, by the way, download it as well at uh, seaweedmanifesto.com here. Um, so yeah, it went very, very uh, big. And we decided with the foundation um, to address some of the challenge of, of this uh, manifesto. If you look at the main conclusion of this uh, manifesto, the main barriers is that seaweed is totally immature and fragmented outside of Asia. It's a new mature market. We are still in the stone age. Um, and we are all working in isolation, meaning that you are funding in Canada things that are quite similar to what we are funding in Europe and what is funded by the US as well. So let's try to collaborate. Uh, let's try to work together. And if you are a, a small civil entrepreneur, I mean, you may have a hard time to get the information and to get places where to get the information because there's no global organization for civil. There's no global platform that is existing. There's a lack of global standards as well, meaning that a big problem we have, I'm not sure about Canada, but I, I think it is the same uh, we have in US and in, in Europe is a very, for instance, a very low tolerance uh, for iodine residues in the seaweed, which prevent a lot of producers to put their seaweed on the market. So we do have a very low level of tolerance uh, uh, in the regulation in, in, uh, in US and Europe. When you look at the regulation in, in Japan and in Korea and in, and in China, uh, the tolerance to iodine is 100 times higher than it is in our countries. Why is this? Ignorance is the best answer, I think. We still need to uh, uh, rationalize and streamline the regulation and the standards for seaweed. We need to have global standards. Uh, and that's a big problem because it does prevent um, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, seaweed uh, product to get into the market, and the same will go uh, will will apply for heavy metals and so forth, because we also have very scattered data. There's the, this very limited or inexistent collaboration uh, will will uh, lead will lead to a very scattered level of data. There's also a very limited environmental requirements, which is a big problem because seaweed is mostly in in people's minds is is related to uh, to invasive species is related to a very big concern like the sargassum tide we had in we have in in in, in, in Caribbean, um, like uh, some other tide we have all around the world. People are very scared, and it's news. People are scared about what is new, 
So there are very low level of social acceptance. So the social licensing is very low uh, and the permitting from the national authority is very complex as well. Um, actually, seaweed, uh, seaweed may, may well be the, one of the most sustainable business in the world, but I think it will get easier. It is already easier to get uh, uh, a permitting to pump oil in the ocean than to uh, cultivate seaweed at the moment, which is a big deal. And this is also mostly due to the lack of standards and, and requirements in terms of, of environmental uh, uh, regulation. There's a technology gap. It's very labor intensive at the moment. People are, it's very, very labor intensive, even in Japan or China. We don't know where is the market. Uh, problem of special planning, uh, slow licenses processes, we named it, and the need for a dietary, dietary shift. We all need to become seaweed ambassadors and to change our diet and move to seaweed or seaweed-based product or seaweed-fed product if we want the, the world to change. Based on this, we decided to act uh, with the foundation, uh, with the UN Global Compact on five uh, points. Global collaboration, harmonized standards, environmental safety, scientific research, and coordinated investment. And to do that, the first thing was to launch a global platform, a global place to bring together these people. Because if we, we can we can we can save the world with TV, we can enable the TV revolution only if we get together. So we launch uh, with the final in partnership with the Financial Times last week the Safe Seaweed Coalition, which is fully funded. It's a five million pounds funding from Lloyd's Register Foundation to support the creation of a coalition that will work initially on three different topics. Consumer safety, environmental safety, occupational safety, define standards and global uh, consistency for these three different topics. So out of the four million pounds, 80% of them will be distributed to project in order to support these different uh, safety aspects. Why safety? Because seaweed is also very competitive. There's so much potential. People are quite reluctant to collaborate. And the best uh, way to convene people is only to talk about safety. Safety is a, is, a, is has a very strong convening power because you may say that your product is cheaper, is better, is uh, it is uh, more sustainable, it is more organic, but you will never say my product is safer and my competitor's product because you don't want your product to be related to something unsafe. Uh, or to compare with something unsafe. So you don't compete on safety, it's a pre-competitive topic, which is why we, are this, we have decided with this coalition to first focus on, on, this, uh, on, this, uh, on, this, um, on this safety topic. In order to drive this coalition, we have defined a, a global governance, which is illustrated here. So you see that we have people from all over the world. The Cap Breton University in Canada is representing uh, proudly Canada. We have people from Asia, from, uh, from, uh, from South America, from, uh, from, uh, from Australia. We have mostly, I would say, large, uh, uh, universe, large, large organizations. So we have FAO as part of the steering committee, Australia steering association, Korean Nori association, Sea Grant in the US, Nestle, Rican Food, Sintef in Norway, WWF, and so forth. So we have a very, very wide governance um, group of people who is uh, very active, the, the European Commission as well is part of us. So it is a global uh, a coalition and really want to be, to, uh, to, and we would really would like to welcome as much seaweed stakeholders as we could. We need members, uh, we need as much members. So membership is totally free, it's fully paid by the foundation anyway, all this initiative. So membership is free, we really need to bring this uh, community and build a global community to really make the market uh, tomorrow. So in order to do that, uh, we will uh, rely on the secretariat. That's the uh, five main people in the secretariat, no need to be long on that, uh, but, uh, but yeah, being part of the secretariat. And, and we will, in order to define the priorities of our, 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 our coalition, we are going through a process of round table discussions. Ideally, we would have liked to organize a big event and gather 2,000 people in one place, but that will not be possible for quite a while. So in the meantime, we have decided to organize roundtable discussion by a group of 15. So um, in order to decide what will we do with this $3 million of investment that will uh, be used by the coalition to support projects. So we have 
shared civic coalition, uh, safe civic coalition members. So anyone who is registered in the coalition can apply to join this roundtable discussion. We have experts, we have UN organization. Or we are organizing on various topics that you can see on the right. Uh, we are organizing discussions. And, and, and based on this, we will define call for proposal over the next two years in order to support actively project. And because we have a, a, an ambition to leverage, uh, we would really like to, uh, to, uh, to uh, I mean, the project, the, this project will not be 3 million, but it should be 12 to 15 million at the end of the day. So, um, so yeah, my main call to action is join the coalition. You see that you have here uh, a global map, which is existing right now of the seaweed stakeholders that are members of the, of the coalition. So the idea it was, it's quite an old one. There's much more dots at the moment. Um, so we are really trying to get a global mapping of the seaweed stakeholders, who is interesting to buy, who is interesting to sell, who is interesting to invest. I mean, a lot of investors are coming to us saying, I want to do impact investment in seaweed. How can I do that? We want to be a source of answer for them. Uh, we want to be a source of guidance for them. We need investment. We need research. We need to make sure that we don't duplicate research, that there's a great, great level of collaboration. So, and the first stage is really to get into that. So save seaweedcoalition.org, get registered there if you are into seaweed already. Uh, and that's the, really the first, uh, the first thing to do in order to be part of the discussion. And then there will be newsletters, there will be discussion, this roundtable discussion. And obviously, at the end of the day, we expect to have an annual event gathering all our members. We are, I think we, are, we have already have over 300, 000, uh, 300 members who joined the coalition over the last month. Uh, and it's, 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 there's new members uh, all the time. Because once again, it can only be all together if we want to make a difference. See, with as a clearly an untapped potential and, 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 uh, and, and we need to get together. There's no other way. Uh, the last slide that I would like to show is a bit, uh, uh, is a bit different to uh, not focusing specifically on seaweed, but, uh, but just to say that it has been a very tough time for everyone these last 12 months, but I think the world is full of solutions. If you step back and look at the world, uh, how it is going for the last 200 years, it is getting better and better, way better. And even in the last 50 years, if you look at extreme poverty or, or, or starvation, I mean, back 40 years ago, 40% of the population used to, uh, used to starve to death. Uh, we only have 9% now while we move from 5 billion to 7.5 billion people. Life expectancy keeps growing all around the world. Gender parity keeps growing all around the world illiteracy rate is, is, is crumbling. It moved in 50 years from 80% to 20%. Even the number of deaths in natural catastrophe um, is, crumbling, is crumbling as well. And, and I mean, uh, okay, we, we, we just uh, in, a, in a very uh, difficult um, uh, pandemic right now, but nine months to, to find five vaccines while it took uh, years and years and years for the previous pandemic. I mean, collaboration is the source of everything and the world is full of good news. So all together, and it can only be all together, we want to be remembered as the first generation of, on this planet who managed to feed the entire world with safe and sustainable food while, while, while mitigating the impact on, 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 on the resources uh, that we have and, and, and building a safer world for everyone. So that's what we call the the seaweed uh, revolution. Uh, there was a, a scribe who uh, made a nice uh, a summary of my uh, uh, action uh, last week. So I'm sharing that with you. You have my detail here. The call is really the call to action is really join us and and uh, and, and and get seaweed in your life every day um, and join the revolution. We'll be glad to have you on board. It's a very very good news for all of us seaweed. The seaweed revolution. I love it. I'm part of the seaweed revolution, Vincent. I, um, I own a magazine called Edible Vancouver Island Magazine. And as a revolutionarist myself, we cover our cover, seaweed. And there is an incredibly delicious recipe in here. If anybody wants it, message me. Seaweed um, fritters, they are delicious. If anybody wants the recipe, message me. Um, speaking of messages, I want everyone to go to our chat. Um, because Vincent, you are, uh, first of all, thank you so much. That was 
that was just incredible. I cannot believe how much work is being done and what and, and the information you shared was so easy to understand and you just did an amazing job. But also thank you for your passion and your positivity. The world is getting better. I love that. We don't always think that when we watch the news, but it really is. And um, I think that the work that you're doing and the inspiration that you're infusing onto the planet will only increase not only our ability to do more good work, but our feeling of optimism for the future. So thank you. Now, I, I inspire and encourage you to ask some questions because um, having an opportunity to speak to someone um, like Vincent, who has his education experience, um, is just such a gift. So I'm going to turn over um, the next section of this um, morning to the amazing Erin Bremner Mitchell, who is part of Cascadia. She is going to be um, making sure that all these questions come in and, and that Vincent can ask, uh, answer some of them. So there you go, Erin. Thank you so much. Thank you, Karen. Good day, everybody. And thank you, Vincent. Thank you so much for ending on such a positive note. Uh, we did get a couple of comments in the chat uh, sending along that um, those thanks for such a positive, uh, a positive ending. Thank you so much for that. So we do have some questions coming in on the chat and feel free to uh, uh, keep them coming folks. I'm here to read them out and give Vincent an opportunity to address those questions for you. And, and, and Vincent, I'm hungry now. You started off talking about food and now I'm hungry. So uh, on the food note, what's your favorite way to eat seaweed? That's a good question, right? Um, you, um, I, I like uh, eating uh, seaweed. Uh, there are so many different ways, actually, uh, with uh, with lentils and and, and I like uh, pancakes with kelp. It's very nice with uh, with saccharina latissima. Uh, so well, there are so many ways. You know, I I, I was with um, we had a UN Food System Summit on on seaweed back two weeks ago with a, 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 a three star Michelin chef. Uh, with cooking seaweed, and he was telling us he's cooking 25 different types of seaweed. He has been awarded best chef in the world uh, last year by the Michelin uh, Guide, and uh, and he's based in France. He's from Argentina, and yeah, 25 different types of seaweed, and he's he's uh, he's uh, he's growing them next to his restaurant now because he wants to have them them as fresh as possible. I mean, some of them at least. Uh, but but there are so many different tastes, so many different flavors. That's the thing, and it 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 it, uh, it contains the glutamate, the umami, as uh, as it say by uh, which is a new taste as such. So it's just fantastic. It, it, you need time to uh, understand how to cook that. That's the problem. It, uh, it, uh, it's a bit different uh, and it, it's a new taste. So you need to get used to it. But once you get used to it, it's very really fantastic. And I put that, I mean, the condiment on most of my salads. And, 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 but yeah, I'm not a very good cook, actually, which is a shame for French. But, um, but yeah, and you know, and, and that's funny because that's something that we have lost, actually. We have lost because. I mean, the oldest trace of seaweed where uh, they date, uh, I mean, where all, are 14,000 years old and they are down in the south of Chile, which has uh, revealed the real ways that people uh, settled in America because the uh, Sapiens has never been to America. Uh, and initially we were thinking about the Clovis route, you know, these people moving through the, not very far from where you are, <laughs> bearing uh, 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 13,000 years ago. And then we realized that there was some, uh, uh, traces of human being which were way older than this and they were all eating seaweed and we questioned why and why we have no trace of this why we have no remaining of these people uh, up north uh, and then we realized that we have no remainings of them because they were following the coast what is known as a kelp highway you know so the first settlers in america they all followed the kelp highway why because they were eating seaweed i mean it, it may have been pleasant to archaeologists who are mostly male to think that, yeah, I mean, we are what we are because we were hunting mammoths while uh, uh, women and kids were uh, down in the cavern. But the, the truth is not there. The truth is that we were just collecting weakling seaweed uh, and, and small fishes. And that's why we are what we are. And, and uh, which is demonstrated by the way human beings settled to, uh, to America. And actually, our, our, the, 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 our brain is our brain uh, only because we have a, we had to eat a lot of in polyunsaturated fatty acid um, during our evolution, and they, they come only from seaweed. So we are what we are because we had a lot of seaweed, and we lost that uh, tradition. We lost that contact with the ocean back uh, back two thousand years ago, and uh, with the Romans and so forth. And then we have to recover it. And I think, uh, especially in Canada, which is 
where you have some amazing pioneers in the world of seaweed. Uh, 40 years ago, they started some amazing job. And if we are there, if the manifesto is there, everything there, it is because of them. Um, so there were some very, very strong pioneers in Canada. So it's, it's very important uh, that you uh, continue this, uh, this efforts. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And for the history too, that's marvelous. It seems that your plastic cup uh, attracted some attention. We have a question from Norm. What needs to happen to scale up the use of seaweed for packaging and containers to replace plastic? Yeah, uh, what needs to happen is a chicken and egg actually at the moment. So uh, we had a very nice call uh, like this roundtable discussion a couple of weeks ago with Nestle and the, and the seaweed based material uh, producers. And Nestle was like, well, we need big volume if we want to shift to plastic, uh, to uh, buy a seaweed bio-based plastics. And, and uh, so it's like, yeah, you need big volume, but you, you don't want to invest. And, 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 and the, on the other hand, the producers, they need uh, a major investment or major commitment if they want to create big volumes. And, and then it goes back to the supply because you need a lot of seaweed. So I think it's a lot about, uh, first of all, the main problem is understanding how to get the, 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 the extract, the polymer extract. We are not very mature on that. We are not very cost efficient. So we need to be much more cost efficient on getting the polymer out of seaweed and create this kind of plastic, which are a bit too, too, uh, too, uh, too expensive. There's a problem of standards as well. Typically in Europe, you cannot put that on the market because there's no regulation for seaweed-based packaging. So this is food, actually. It is not <laughs> packaging, it is food. Then you can put that on the market. But 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 that's a problem because I mean so we need to have uh, uh, I'm not sure about the situation in Canada or in the US but we need to have a clear regulation on seaweed based packaging we need to have a clear regulation on on, on compostability what does that mean because everybody claims they are compostable or they are biodegradable what does that mean exactly there's no clear clear standards and once again if you want to uh, incentivize people to get into that. We need clear standards and clear regulation. So it's all only a question of regulation and a bit of technology gap that are not there. But there's there are some, some fantastic uh, company like there's one called uh, Notpla N O T P L A, uh, which is producing edible bubble of water. You know they supply the London Marathon and you swallow it all the uh, the, the, the bubble of uh, seaweed and the water inside and that replaces the plastic glass. So there there are some fantastic projects going on. Lollyware in, in the US, they have uh, replaced the, the plastic straw by a um, seaweed-based seaweed straw, for instance, and so forth and so on. But, but still, there's a technological gap, a regulatory gap as well, uh, and some question about chicken and egg, who comes first, the offer, all the demand. Not plus actually presenting uh, during Seaweed Days, Sunday morning at Good. 10 o'clock. Yes, so uh, if you're interested in that plastic conversation, do join us back on Sunday. Exactly, morning. they are the best one to answer the question. Excellent, great. Um, a question uh, following up on that one from Bill. How do we convince our political leaders to invest in the ocean, necessary, ocean science necessary to maximize the seaweed opportunity? Well, that, that, I think we, we need to tell the story right first. I mean, I, I come from France, who is the second largest uh, maritime territory in the, land, in the world, who has a huge biodiversity of seaweed, uh, quite a good history, good scientists, and that's nowhere in the agenda. And I'm meeting with the, the French minister for, uh, for the ocean actually on this week. But, but, but yeah, I mean, you need, to, you need to tell the story, that, which is why we did, uh, we did this manifesto, because we need to have something very, very short, clear about this, but what is the potential? Uh, and we need to tell them the story, I think. They, and then we have to articulate that um, and, and, and make sure that, uh, once again, the licensing process and, the, and we have clear environmental requirements uh, to secure them. Because the last thing they want to hear, I mean, if I take once again the example of France, I mean, we are struggling with green uh, seaweed tides uh, or with sargassum tides in, uh, in, in Caribbean. Uh, and then, I mean, when you talk about cultivating seaweed, you're like, oh, whoa, 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 So you need to convince them, you need to demonstrate that there's no harm, that most of these seaweed tides are coming from uh, uh, wild, and all, all these seaweed tides actually are coming from wild seaweed. As soon as the, as the seaweed cultivation is properly managed, there's no risk. Uh, there's no risk of invasivity as long as these local species and so forth. 
So you need to demonstrate that and, 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 and you need to position, you need to educate them. I think that, that, that's the problem, you need to educate them. So uh, because time is not on our side, on the planet's side, how can small independent farmers make a go of this uh, even though there's not um, larger investments coming from, um, uh, from levels of government? Well, that's very, that's very difficult for small farmers. And that's also why we have created this coalition so that small former farmers can convert, can go quickly, can get access to the information because, I mean, seaweed cultivation is not, it's, it's not an easy task. I mean, you need to, to understand, you need to get the seeding, you need to get the, uh, the ropes and how to do it and so forth. So we need to support that. But, but the good thing is that in terms of CapEx, it's very, very low. And that's why it's so uh, it's so uh, it's so important for Africa because I mean in Africa you don't especially because in Africa you don't need the drying um, device you don't need anything to dry the seaweed I mean you can just leave them on the beach and they will dry um, and and uh, and once they are dry they are dried you can keep them for months almost so that's fine I mean they will not get uh, I mean, they will uh, still stay very good. And the good thing, by the way, on seaweed that I have not, man I have not mentioned is that they keep all their, uh, all their uh, natural properties, even when dried, which is a bit strange for us because we think like the fresher it is, the better it is. But no, for seaweed, it's, no, it's not. I mean, dry them. Seaweed are so resistant because they can grow in the eye, they can grow in the sun, they can resist to very salty atmosphere. They are, they are very resistant. Their structure is very resistant. So you can, you can dry them, they will keep all their uh, nutrients, all their properties, they will be just as good. In Japan, you will never find any fresh seaweed. That has, doesn't make sense for it. It's a difficulty. So anyway, it's a very interesting source for, uh, for small scale producers. So I think here again, it's a question of education and training. And I think now with this remote training potential, and we have a lot of uh, about training, we need to train these people. There is an interesting initiative uh, called Green Wave in the US, which should be operating, I think, in Canada. Uh, Brent Smith, fantastic, is trying to convert fishermen into seaweed or at least permaculture uh, uh, growers. Uh, and, and that's the type of thing that we need to do. I mean, uh, train them, develop skills, build, build, uh, yeah, build capacities. This is an interesting topic. Somebody's asking, uh, Linda's asking, uh, what strategies can we use to keep the seaweed industry positive and i think you're answering these questions as as we go here it's about telling the story and yeah. and talking about and the I, benefits and i think uh, they're the they're the they're the they're something to do for all of us as well uh, i mean we need to support that industry as well in our daily life uh, each time we eat and we drink we are seaweed activists we are environmental activists i mean the, 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 we shape the world each time we decide to eat or to drink something i mean uh, these food brands uh, this uh, regulate, I mean, especially the food brands, they are listening to us. And, uh, and yeah, and four times a day, you really shape the world uh, you want. So I think the, 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 the first thing is let's, let's try it. Let's build the market. Um, because once again, if we don't have a food market, it will be very, very complicated to build a resilient and sustainable seaweed industry if we don't have a food market at the center of this one. So um, I think that, that, that's, that's our key message and our take home message uh, to get, 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 I mean, make our choice, make our daily choice and try to use seaweed. You, you can find it in many, many stores, no? So um, quite easy. I think that's a really great way to wrap it up, Vincent. We are close on time, but there are so many questions coming in. I'm going to save this chat and I will probably send you a long email with all of these okay. questions and hopefully we can get these answered and uh, and posted up on, um, on some of our social media platforms or even the uh, Seaweed Days website. So that's if fine. I'm just yeah, sharing the Safety with Coalition because that's what is, if you have still questions, that's the best way to address them is to uh, drop them. Uh, not drop us or not. So uh, that's it. So don't, that's do not hesitate uh, to, uh, to uh, get there. Amazing, Vincent. I'm so inspired. I'm ready to go uh, run or do a, an electric bike or something <laughs> like that because I, I'm just so motivated by uh, by your speak. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank today. you. Thank you. Go for the civil revolution all together. <laughs> that's right. Over Thank to you very there. much. And thanks a lot to Cascadia Civil and to everyone for this great, great event. Thank you.
Thank you, Aaron and Vincent. Um, that's all the time we have for questions, but we really want to um, encourage you to continue to, to send the questions in and we will get back to you. There's lots going on throughout the week. Um, if you want more information on Seaweed Festival, go to our website and get all the goodies. I wanna also um, thank Vincent for coming to us from the UK. I think it's around 6.20 there right now. Is that right? 6.15 uh, in, in the evening. So thank you so much. Um, it was a very thought provoking and inspiring opening keynote, Vincent. You're welcome. I'm in France. It's 7.30 here. It's 7.30. <laughs> How was today? Was it a good day for us? <laughs> Thanks so much. I also want to thank the Vancouver Island Economic Alliance once again for sponsoring and hosting the Industry Speaker Series.